Hi, it's Dave from Drive Adventure, and today it's episode one of Costco Drives. Now, it's been something I wanted to do on my channel for a while, and now I've reached this incredible milestone of 1,000 subscribers, and thanks very much for all of you guys who do subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, it's onwards and upwards from here. But I thought I would do a series, because I go to Costco every single week for supplies for the family, and I'll just talk about the things that have interested me around the topic of cars. Let's turn this heated seat down. So, video of the week. What have I watched on YouTube? What videos and influencers have I been paying attention to? And what have I thought has been really good? And of course, a video that's just come out, which has caused quite a storm in Porsche circles, has been Andres Poininger walk through of that most incredible and sublime GT Porsche car cave. I mean, heavens, those cars in that shed. And what fascinated me about that video, because it's come out in various guises, I think the best one is the Top, is the top Gear one with Chris Harris. More about him later. Chris Harris, I'd say. But uh, yeah, talking through the new Porsche 992 GT3 in that rather fabulous and Moorish sharp blue meant to believe. And what fascinated me about the video was how they were talking about how the YSAC GT division engineers, the phrase that really stood out to me, and I'll put a link in for the video uh, below this video, what really stood out to me was when he said, sometimes we have to come in here and drive the old cars and reset. And I thought that was fascinating because obviously the latest iteration of the GT3, which is, I think, by all accounts, set to burst onto the scene in early 2021. That car is a culmination of all the engineering right back to that very, very first GT3, that fabulous silver car that features um, prominently in Chris Harris's Top Gear video. So I thoroughly recommend you watch that video. Other things about that video that stood out to me were when they paused and talked about the various GT3s and RS cars, obviously it's the 911R in there, but they talked and paused for a few minutes and Chris talked about his rather fabulous and Moorish 4 litre, which as we know, he was the first owner of. He got that car from, I think it was Dick Lovitz, and it's had hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views, the last drive of the year video Again, watch that video if you can on his four litre car. Because lo and behold, if I could have written the script, I could have written it better. Here we have the Chris Harris four litre falling into my hands for a drive and a test drive and full review of that car. Um, just sensational. And by now, when you watch this video, undoubtedly you've already seen that video anyway. So uh, what a thrill it was to drive that car. And I really hope that I got it across in the film just how good it, it, it really was. Just uh, really blew me away. And as I said in the video, hopefully it's in the video. It's almost the promised land. <laughs> quite, quite simply, it really, really did. But it was interesting how AP, as he's fondly known, Porsche Circles, Motoring Circles, how he spoke so fondly of all the different cars that they've produced and manufactured. And every GT3, whatever one you've got, it's, it's just it's just a sensational car. I think right now the 991.2 GT3 state sale prices for me they're just representing fabulous value because I think we're going to be talking about 160 plus for a fully loaded um, 992 GT3. And when of course with the announcement the government's made now in England about bringing forward the ban on selling purely petrol powered cars. Um, you have to wonder what the engineers are thinking now because it's 2020 so we've got 10 years to get petrol cars off, off, off the production line purely petrol cars of course 
It's hybrid, the answer. Does it suit a GT3? A petrol, <coughs> excuse me, a petrol engine and a hybrid bolted on. 918, obviously got history, got four. So there we go. So my video of the week, without any question, has to have been the video with Chris Harris there going through all the cars and he really got a very, very, very good reveal on that fabulous blue car under that cover. So I bet the guys from Car Fiction won't have it. That's another good video with uh, Mr. Catchpole to watch. So, okay. I did put out on my Instagram, moving on a to topic too, I did put on my Instagram about should I do some watch talk? Should I feature watches? Because a lot of people are into cars like me. They're also into these things. You know, these things right here. Um, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about watches just briefly because it's another one of my passions and uh, you know I get them out of the uh, them out of the bank every so often to wear a few and then they go back to the bank nice and securely stashed away. So this watch has a very very interesting story to it. I got this watch in 2020. I got it in July. It was when uh, the lockdown was ending and this particular watch was actually offered to me or this uh, the steel Daytona was offered to me two years before in July 2018 when the phone rang I was at uh, Anglesey racetrack uh, with my pals and we we're doing a track day there a private day for us and for our friends it's really really good to do uh, anyway the phone rang and it was the it was the manager at Medela uh, that's Whittles in Preston and they, they said, oh, we've got the White Dale, White Dial uh, Daytona for you, David, you know. And just just right there, I had th to think to myself, oh, you know, I really want it, but my wife had been on and on at me. I'm getting all these cars, it had to be some balance. So she said, I'm putting my foot down now, and we'd agreed to proceed with an extension on my house and a flashy kitchen, which I, I, I really enjoy cooking, I enjoy it too, but you know, so I, had to, I was about to spend an enormous amount of money on that. It was just, just, just couldn't do it, so I passed. Anyway, in uh, 2019, I was invited to an event for Rolex customers from, from, from the shop. Um, it impressed me, went to Michelin star restaurant, it's fantastic, uh, looked after us so well, thank you very much. Anyway, I sat next to a guy um, at Chris Ayrton on Instagram, he does a bit of uh, motor racing, has a Nissan garage, really nice guy. And you know, I had uh, one of the other watches on at the time, and he had he had a, a steel Daytona on with a white dial, and oh, that was really, really nice. So I had another Daytona on, so we exchanged watches, and uh, I told him how the shop had asked me if I'd like to take one in, in uh, July 8, 2018. And of course, I couldn't because. Um, I had all this work to put up to my house, it was coming up, it was going to cost me a fortune. So anyway, have a guess who got that watch? <laughs> it was it was Chris, so I'm really, really pleased that he got it, and of course he was really into cars like me, so he hit it off. So that seating plan was, was, was really, really good. So, some watch talk. So what, what are my thoughts about watches? Well, what's happened to Rolex is, is that in the days I was building my collection, watches were, apart from the steel Daytona, pretty readily available. What's happened now is that Rolex has decided to restrict, rest, restrict the supply, they've decided to rationalise and eliminate a lot of agents that sell the watches for them and now to get into Rolex now anything in the steel sports bracket you just you just got to be getting other stuff too and building up to it because this watch I'm wearing today this watch actually came um, into my possession after 25 years of buying watches at Whittles Jewelers, 25 years. So for me, it's very special because it's the watch I got after 25 years of custom in, in, in their store. So again, thanks so much to, them, to those guys uh, for getting, getting, getting this watch for me. So where do I see it going with Rolex? Well, I don't see it getting any better. I think if you've not spent money in the shop, you don't have to have spent the most but you certainly have to have spent some money in the shop they need to know who you are and it's about creating the relationship and another one of the channels I like to watch on YouTube is the watch guys so a shout out to them 
because I like I like uh, Damien's rundown on watches and uh, he has a video about how to build a relationship with a dealer and it's just not going to happen for you if you just go in and say I want a steel sub hour and a day or I want a green bezel sub or I want this or I want that and you know put my name on the list if they've never seen you before or you've never bought anything from the shop before I think you can forget it uh, now I have helped out a few friends over the years. One of my sons, uh, one of my friend's sons, he was 21, so I was getting a really special watch to me, which we'll get onto on the channel eventually. But I asked if I could, if I could, if they could help to get him his watch because he was going to be 21. Now his 21st birthday had actually been and gone, but um, they, they were very good to me and they were able to secure him a steel uh, Submariner date um, in the previous uh, double one. Configuration double one double six one zero with the black black dial, which I actually prefer. So, what's my favourite Rolexes? I love the Submariners, but I've got a very very partial point for the uh, the Sea Dwellers, and I've got a few of those, and uh, they're fantastic watches. I really like the flat bass. I wasn't overly keen on the bubble that came with the 50th anniversary edition, the 43 mil. Wasn't sure. It wasn't, wasn't really quite enamoured with that one. So yeah, I've got a I've got an aluminium uh, one, double six, double O, uh, Submariner. Sorry, sorry, I'm getting distracted because there's been an accident I had. Anyway, stay clear. So I've got a one double six double O, Sea Dweller, and uh, then I've got a double one, double six double O, Sea Dweller. Just only made for two years, and then I've got a, a deep sea, one of the very early ones in the double one triple six zero configuration with the black dial. Maybe I'll talk about sea dwellers on another episode of day one watches, perhaps uh, on the channel. So, what's next on the what's next on the list? Okay, thoughts on car releases. Well. The hot topic's got to be uh, got to be this little hot number from from Toyota, this GR machine, uh, this pocket rocket that uh, only I think 600 examples come into the UK, and I know a few people have actually got the name down. I'm going to be lucky enough to get one. Um, again, great reviews. And one thing about me and cars is, I really am a firm believer that you don't need to have the latest thing, the latest top top car, the most expensive car, RS, Lamborghini, Ferrari. To enjoy cars I think you can have just as much pleasure just as much happiness just as much thrill and enjoyment and experience driving something like the GR Toyota or for that matter you know a nice Ford ST or a Ford RS or something like that cars which as I was as I was growing up I really I really don't mind uh, the Subarus the Mitsubishis and all of those evolutions and so on and so forth those are cars which I looked at because perhaps it was just a pipe dream to think Porsche and Ferrari and other, other marks and uh, I sometimes do have to pinch myself I've actually got uh, a GT Porsche and you just sometimes hard to believe it really. So I think that's a car that's very very hot, uh, a very very hot topic. So let's have a look at my next little thing on the list. Okay, reflections on my drives. Well. How can I sum up that four litre? Well, rare. It's a very, very, very rare car. And the chances of actually seeing one on the road is hen's teeth type ratio. Non-existent chance, really. Um, potentially 30, 32 right-hand drive cars. And I think some of those were exported to other right-hand drive markets. I remember seeing JZN, they had a wonderful, wonderful uh, blue car, I think it was Gulf Blue, it, it might have been a different car, I'm not quite sure, but you can check out their website, you can see some of their old sold cars, and I think that went to Hong Kong at 550,000, It's a lot of money, a lot of money, but you know what, I do think these cars with a bit of mileage on them are worth every penny, because at 600 examples, I think your money's very safe, as long as you use them, and that's one of the saddest things, I see that car there at uh, Roman's, 286 miles on the clock. They've had to even change the tyres from the original Michelin Cup tyres to now the Cup 2 because the car's been made and delivered in 2011 and it's never been anywhere. So I think that's very, very sad. So yeah, rare, 
raw, raucous, doesn't need anything on the exhaust system. It just suits the car. And I think the steel brakes really suit that car. The way it flowed, the way it was just so quick with the steering. And if you watch that video with the Harrison pointing and go through that video and watch it when he pulls and talk about that car, I think he even admits himself it's one of, I think it's I think it's the greatest uh, GT3 RS that has been made and will ever be made. Let's talk about this car a little bit then. So I will do a video on this car eventually. And the reason I got this car was because my other E-Class estate was a diesel and it was great for economy, it was great for driving, but it just didn't excite me. And I'd had E-Class estates one after the other after the other. And then I thought I'd always kind of like, you know, yearned after for a for a, an AMG. And then my, one of my good friends in the car game, I'm gonna get to get to an episode on the channel about cars and what is, what's going on with cars with him, not, not too distant future. But this car came up, a local dealer, and I haggled a great deal, and it's been absolutely immense. I mean, it swallows my family, takes you to takes you to wherever you want to go. It's got blistering performance. Obviously, it's not it's not superb in corners like Porsches, but you know, in a straight line, this thing's got some beans, and you are off. You are gone on full send. It's got some. Uh, staggering staggering performance and the reason I wanted to get this car was because as you know I'm a really great believer in the environment you know you really do see some crap drivers there don't you I mean, that guy was parked there she could see him or he could see him and she just she left at the last minute to pull out and I'm going around Crazy. so yeah I wanted this car because it was uh, V8 twin turbo and I just love the gnarly gnarly engine this car has and it just growls in fact this engine in this car is the one that's in the GTR pro race mega machine that uh, Mercedes have just launched and, and smashed the, the, the Nuremberg sorry, the Nuremberg ring record with so yeah it sounds absolutely fantastic pause to get the lights let's see now what else have we got? I'm thinking about doing a Q&A, so putting it out there on Instagram, asking questions about me, about what, what, what you'd like to see on the channel, questions, you know, and what I'll do is maybe when I do this uh, drive, Costco drives episode two, you put some questions in and I'll hopefully be able to give you some answers. And I did take a bit of a break with YouTube tough as a story behind that maybe I'll talk about that on the way back but uh, we'll get to that later on and what's coming up yeah I'll tell you that story on the way back because it's uh, it's quite a moving story actually why why I want to get into why I wanted to get into YouTube and why I took a bit of a break from it now I've got back to it so I'll, I'll bloody hell this is So uh, yeah, what's coming up? Well, on the channel this coming week, I will be recording a full review on a Porsche Cayman 4-litre GTS. So my RS is going in to have a little TLC done to it. It's got a warranty matter. It's got to get sorted out. It's axle lifters. It's not working, so that has to get fixed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a courtesy car all social distancing will be protocols will be followed and I'm going to get the demonstrator from Porsche Centre Kendall very graciously decided to help me a little bit on the channel so we're going to be featuring the GTS with that 4 litre engine so we just see how that uh, how that uh, goes how I enjoy that car so looking forward to, to putting that together tomorrow and that'll be on the channel probably in the next uh, couple of weeks well, I've arrived at Costco. I'll be heading in, getting my supplies. And I'll give you that little story about why there was that big long gap on the channel, why I kind of 
really almost gave up really when I decided then to go back to it. So I'll talk about that on the way home. I can't be so much slow with all that gear in the back. But that's the great thing about this car, you know, you just open the boot, it's cavernous, and just poof, stuff goes in, no problem, and you are off. Um, this car does everything. Um, that's the thing I'll do as well, I'll talk a little bit about this car and the specification about this car. The guys in the Taipei Bay, oh, look after me. When I drive back, see you shortly. Okay, so. I'm going to talk a little bit about the spec of this car and then I'm going to talk about Engage. Spec about this car, what I like about this car, then I'm going to leave a story about why I got into YouTube, why I stopped for a bit, why I came back to it. So bear with me. Onwards. Just turn the music down. So the E63 has three suspension settings so it can cater for all your moods. So if you want a nice, placid, gentle drive, it's still firm, but it's a bit comfort to it, and actually comfort setting. Then you've got your sport setting, just sharpens it up a little bit, a bit firm in the bends. Then you've got your Sport Plus, which is actually the one I like, actually. It's the firmest one, um, more communicative, better in the corners, just a firm, crisp drive, but the wife doesn't like it. With the suspension, you get setups on the actual car's performance. So you can have in the drive mode, you've got moderate because it's not a slow car, even when it's in moderate, <laughs> and then you've got sport, which is the one I tend to use mainly. Sport, and then you've got dynamic, and dynamic is uh, you know, quite quick, really. The engine goes into sort of a different level of tension should we say it hums that bit louder and then the defcon 3 is your uh, your race mode which to be honest with you, i don't really use because it just keeps you in that power band all the time even though this is a twin turbo engine the torque comes in very low uh, the race is just it's too much for just normal driving to be honest and dynamic is if you in stop start traffic but if you're just pressing on a bit and you want a bit of overtaking punch and you're in your, you go into your uh, dynamic uh, setting. That's what I use for pushing on. The cabin, yeah, it's Mercedes, it's luxurious. Um, another just updated, another facelift, all the bloody facelifts car companies do. But it's got a lovely cabin. Um, I've gone for the you know, standard kind of black ash trim and the silver stands out lovely. Um, this one came in 2019, so it had the new steering wheel but they're gonna gone again they've gone on again and every two or three years you can expect a new car and that's the thing about cars my strategy with cars is I think to give anyone again a piece of advice is it's, it's the buy hold and enjoy strategy because if you buy hold and enjoy a car you're gonna be financially better off if you get a car then you want the next new one the next new one you know, you're gonna be pumping lots of money into cars and of course there are people who can do that and that's fine but for me, I'm not at that level, so I'll have a car, I'll have it for a while, I'll enjoy it, I'll put some decent mileage on it, and then uh, I'll get something new. So it's very, very interesting. Coming back to GT3, difficult to get away from that car, I suppose, after that video that I watched yesterday. Does it pull on my? Does it pull on my strings? Does it? Does it? Is it floating my boat? Is it a car I want to get? Is it a car I could actually get? Is it a car you can get an allocation on? I don't know. The RS is just sensational, and I think that's a car I want to enjoy for a while yet. So we'll see what happens. Instrumentation on this car, it's all, L, it's all LCD readout, it's all electronic, so there's no dials, it's just a computer. This is just a monstrous engine, four-wheel drive, and a supercomputer running it, I think. Um, so it's got the cruise control, it's got all this driver aid stuff over here, I'll be honest, I, know, I never use it. I don't even tend to put the cruise control on, it's got radar assisted cruise and I find it a bit artificial. I find it, I find it artificial, I can't really, can't get into it. I find it sort of what to slow me down in diff different uh, places and so on. Don't use it. You can set a distance between you and the car ahead and as you come up to a car it slows you off and then it, the car, you'll, you'll overtake and then it'll speed you up. 
But we know where cars are going, don't we? They're going to be going fully automated. We'll just sit in the back and read the newspaper. We'll update your Instagram. That would be sad for people who enjoy driving like me. So it's got big tyres in this car, 265 front, 295 rears, lots of grip, lots of performance. Um, let down a little bit in the bends, the weight you feel it, you can take the bends on quick, um, you do feel that weight pushing your wide slightly but to be honest uh, the straight line speed and the kind of sweeping bend composure this car has having been to Highlands in it uh, three times this year. It's sensational, absolutely sensational. And I suppose yes I could do with some shares in BP because or SO or Shell or shares in <laughs> Costco, that's another great thing about Costco, the fuel prices are so much lower because it does drink petrol. It's uh, it's a gannet when it comes to drinking the the petroleum spirits and yes, you do find yourself if you're using the car a lot and you're not on motorway, you're not in cruise, it does it does it does eat through that uh, the 80 litre tank quite quickly. Standard features, it's got the panoramic uh, glass so you can uh, you can open that up, get a bit more sunlight in the cabin. Maybe we should have done from the beginning. Love this little touch on the steering wheel here, it's got a little marker at 12 o'clock, Porsche-esque you could say. Um, just a great big boot, just very practical, swells the family while well, I can move to some plane flies in to Barton Aerodrome. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the YouTube channel. I want to get into YouTube because I want to share my experience with cars. Quite simply, I get to do, go to some great places, have some great times with my cars. I really enjoy it and I want to share that with you. I never knew where it might go. At the minute, I'm a minnow, I'm a nobody. I would say that I'm just, 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 just getting going really. But I've seen other YouTubers come out of nowhere and they've done all right out of it. I don't want it to be like a big money earner for me. Once upon a time, I might have thought I'd earn a few quid out of it. I'm not so sure. Um, but, you know, I wanted to just share my love of cars, places I've been to. Certainly if you've not seen my Highlands trip video, check that one out, check that one out because that's the sort of trips I do and I just love them. Love meeting my pals and great times and I wanted to share that with people really. And my original idea, I was going to do it and I was going to get the assistance of my nephew Harry and he was my wife's sister's son. And very, very sadly, um, a few years ago, his, his mother died actually from cancer very very abruptly six weeks and she, she was she'd gone which is very very sad and um, you know Harry's a really bright lad super bright very technical very into IT can do websites you could do all you could do all those things and I was thinking about doing some YouTube so we hatched on a plan set it up the drive venture name came from that noise from Harry it's fun first name was Harrison actually, we always called him Harry. So he came up with Drive Adventure, that's where it was born. He was in my front room and he said, you want a brand, you want a brand, you want a name and Drive Adventure. So that was Harry's name, Harry came up with that. And I uh, really appreciate that. Now Harry had a bit of a tough time, his mother died. i <sighs> drone on with this, but you know, it's very, very sad. And really, I just got a call one evening. Um, his family was in America and um, he was in England, but his dad and his, his, his brother were in America. And I got a call from his older brother to say, very sadly, that he'd committed suicide. And he was only 16. And of course, he was going to help me. He was the guy who was going to do the editing, he was good with the camera, very creative. And I thought, you know, it'd be great for him. And it was a big blow because, um, you know, you would don't expect people to go like, you know, that age of life ahead of him. But he'd had a, he'd had, he'd had a difficult, difficult run, really. So that was tricky. So. So I am determined to take Drive Adventure somewhere. Where it goes, we'll see. I'll see where it goes. Appreciate everyone who watches my videos and uh, supports the channel. But that's something you don't know that I've now told you about. Um, so I kind of had that happen. And then my business, which makes all this happen because I'm not living on ad revenue. Mercedes isn't giving me this car. And I don't get free cars from Porsche and to Kendall or Porsche UK. <laughs> I'm paying, I'm paying full up money and I'm, uh, you know, enjoying it at the same time. But nonetheless, you know, I support this with my other business, which is in financial services. So I won't go into too much detail with that because I've got to put loads of caveats and disclaimers on, which I'm not going to be doing. So never mind. 
So that's so that was the idea. We were going to build it. Just let's now just drop it again. And you are through. Um, and then in the FS business, financial services business, I had a key staff member resigned. She decided to leave. I had other staff members. She was very key too, and she decided to go as well. So this perfect storm. And I thought, well, I'll do my YouTube. I'll do my editing. I'll do my filming. I'll do it all myself. But I'll be quite honest with you. It's like trying to run a you know, West End play on your own. You need all the back, backstage people to support you. This wasn't happening. Early part of 2020, I was reached out to by someone. He thought he could support me. That didn't work out. That was March. And so I did that video myself after capturing the content. And then I, I was reached out to by another chap who's based in the Cumbria area. And he said, well, you know, we can help you do this, that or the other. So we had a meeting. I weighed it up. And so far, I've been very, very happy. So uh, the lads have given me lots of support and helped me with the channel, and it's been, uh, you know, it's been great. So the editing, the content capturing, it's not my forte. That's not me. I know kind of what I want, but that's not what I do. So they, they do that for me, and they, they're running it now, really, Instagram, and they're supporting me with that. So big thanks to you guys for that, because without you guys, I don't think we'd be making the progress if it could be called progress that we're making. So that's a little bit about Drive Vent's origin, why I wanted to do it, and you know, in terms of where we go from here, well, it's down to you guys, it's down to subscribing, it's down to commenting, it's down to interacting, it's down to saying to me, well, I wanna see this. But let's uh, maybe talk about something else. Let's talk about my wish list of content. Let's talk about the things that I would like to put on my channel. If you've got a car, that you'd like me to review if you're in the northwest if you'd like us to come and see you and review your car and do some great great content for you and some super photos for you then get in touch fully insured fully comprehensive insured to drive any car i wouldn't have driven the four liter at what price tag sort of probably four hundred thousand pounds if i wasn't insured as much as uh, my friend was kind enough to let me drive that car you don't take chances so so we're fully insured um, and we're happy we'd be happy to uh, to, to come along do a review for you but yes some cars I'd love to drive I'd love to drive a 458 Ferrari Spider as well or maybe the Spider I'd love to drive the Speciale version I'd love that other than Porsche it's the only other brand I've ever looked at and yearned for and thought yeah if I was really 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 wealthy yeah I'd love to have a Ferrari one day and they've got such a back catalogue such a history and that's the thing with Porsche you know it just goes back to the year dark it's been doing what it's been doing successfully for decades. 70th Porsche anniversary, as we know, recently. So, you know, if you've got a Ferrari and you watch this channel, message me. We'd love to love to cover your car. I have got a friend with a Ferrari, so that will come eventually, I think. But um, we've got to book that in for warmer climate, warmer temperatures, I think, because he's a little bit north of the border, shall we say. Uh, yeah, I'd like to drive. I'd love to drive a McLaren. I think my McLarens look fantastic. Everyone says they drive fantastic. Um, I'd love to drive a McLaren. I'd love to get a McLaren on the channel. Um, I'd like to get a Lamborghini on the channel. I feel like I'm talking to all my friends here. <laughs> but yeah, a Lamborghini on the channel. That Lamborghini we had in Scotland was fabulous. Um, in terms of Lamborghinis, which ones would I like to drive? I'd love to drive a Norris. I think that's an astonishing car. I remember sitting in that car at uh, Geneva, four-seater, thinking, bloody hell, this thing is going to excite your family when you take off to the cinema together, my God. So, yeah, that was the car. I'd love to, I'd love to review that car. I'd love to review uh, anything in the Hurricane of Ev Evolution, sort of performance space. That would just be great because um, a lot of lads helps me with the channel as well, with the photographs. Uh, Paul there, uh, Paul, that Paul Photo, it's a great lab. He's uh, dad's got a performance and it's just sounds phenomenal. I've been in it, I've driven it yet, but it's, it's a sensationally noisy and uh, just a great car. It sounds fantastic. I remember actually going to see one. My friend Ray, I remember Ray from the early days, he, he uh, Valet's got nice motors and we went to see this performance. He was one of the first ones that came out of Edinburgh and I remember standing at the back this Peffer Mountain, he turned it on and it's fired up and the blast from the exhausts at the pack, there's a blast of like hot hot water vapour hit my jeans, I was like shit <laughs> and uh, the power from that exhaust at the back, my heavens it was something else. 
one. So yeah, I do like, but obviously my brand's Porsche, you know, that's the brand I want. I grew up, that was the poster, it was the 911, 911, that's, that's the car I've always wanted to own. And I've had, I've had uh, three uh, 911s now, 4S, GT3, RS. So let's see what happens in the future, but you know, great backstory. So that's, that's a little bit about me about some of my tastes, some of the things I wanted to cover off in today's video. Hopefully you'll subscribe, support the channel, we'll take it forward. I don't want to be going down the road of all the main bandwagon people of just getting in my brands and doing the same old, same old stuff. You know, you see one car on YouTube and then all the other YouTubers review it. My, my wish really is to build the channel and then what I'd like to do is I'd like to then get a car, you know, get a Boxster Spider, get the Turbo S, and then you know do a review when it's not just hot off, hot off the production line and everyone else is reviewing them. Put it into an experience and take it to a fantastic location. Do something different because I think everyone you know all these YouTubers did, did basically they're all been taken to the same place on the same aeroplane to review the same car on the same track and you know it gets a bit everyone's got a different style. You know, fair play. You know. Far more successful than I am, but I think some of the originality and all that seems to be get, gets a little bit lost for me. So, uh, thanks very much for watching this video. Costco drives episode one. There will be another episode again. I've honed our skills with this, get it out to you on a regular basis. Whether it will be every week or not, we just have to see. But thanks very much for uh, for watching today's video. A bit of a ramble, a bit of a talk, all things cars. There'll be more watch stuff to more uh, there'll be more watch stuff to come because I know a lot of people love cars love watches thanks very much for watching and as always I'll see you